Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Willie Morgan Show with Manchester United icon, Willie Morgan. Cannot believe it's December already. We're on the, the lead up to Christmas. It's absolutely flown in. First of all, Willie, how are you? I'm not bad. Uh, <clears throat> although I twisted my knee the other day. I'm, I'm playing golf tomorrow. So I've been putting hot packs on and all sorts of things. And it's getting a lot better. So... Hopefully I'll be all right. Um, other than that, just a normal, very, very quiet, you know. Obviously sad news about Ray Kennedy. Uh, he was a good guy. And sadly, you know, I, I did him in a match when he was at Liverpool and I regret it to this day because he was such a nice bloke. So whatever you are, Ray, I hope you forgive me. Um, <laughs> And other than that, no, um, I, I don't know if you, you heard the SFA have upgraded uh, what, five new international games. I'm uh, looking forward to hearing from the SFA. They uh, seem to have gone a little bit quiet, but I'm looking forward to hearing from them about my five new caps and my silver medal, I believe. So, anyway, and other than that, just Again, you know, I was supposed to be doing a dinner down at the Hilton and Reading. And of course, it was cancelled because of the COVID situation. So to all the people, I know they even listen to the podcast, to all the people who were coming, I believe we're doing it in the new year. It's only been deferred. So keep all those questions, all those nasty questions you've got for me. Keep, keep them there. I will be coming. Uh, other than that, no, just... Obviously, it's been pretty hectic down here with Ollie and whatever, so I don't know everything's good. Well, you, you mentioned Ollie. Um, he obviously lost his job after United lost 4-1 against Watford. You talked about on the last show, after the, the Liverpool and Man City games, that you probably thought a change would have happened especially with there being a two-week international break, it would have been maybe the sensible time to make a change. How did you feel when, when you heard the news that he was leaving and obviously the interview he gave to Manchester United themselves where he was quite emotional at the end when it, when it came to leaving? You know, the one thing that hurts me, he didn't listen to the podcast. How many times have we said on this podcast, Get rid of the players who got you the job because they'll get you the sack. Uh, many times. Callum. 20 Numerous years. times. Hundreds of times. Unbelievable. You know, and why he didn't get rid of them. I just don't know why he didn't get rid of them. Um, you know, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know him personally, but he comes across as a very nice very, very nice guy. And it's very sad. I mean, and forget the money. Everyone's saying, oh, well, he's getting a great payoff. It's nothing about that. It's not about payoffs and, and things. Um, he just didn't listen. Um, and it, it, it's sad, but it was inevitable. You know, uh, how can you keep playing? How many times do we have to say, Matic, Fred? Pogba, Martial, Shaw, Maguire, my God. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I find it, I find it uh, very sad. I'm sure he, uh, when he gets over it and he speaks to his bank manager, he'll feel a little bit happier. <laughs> so, I wish I had his bank manager. <laughs> I wish I had his bank manager. But... Uh, we'll just have to wait and see now, uh, see what happens. Well, our good friend Roy Keane um, was on Sky at the weekend and he yeah. said he thinks Ollie may have been a little too nice to some of the players who, who let him down time and time again. And he said that as much as the manager has to change, he echoed our thoughts that many of the players have to change and whoever, obviously Ralph Ranić is coming in as the new manager until the summer that whoever the new manager is has to make changes and make them quickly? Well, he'll be in the same situation as Ollie was. 
as Mourinho was, all of them, you'd be in the same situation. The players that are getting them the job, I mean, I've no idea who he is, by the way, the, the geese that's coming in, never heard of him. But the players that have gotten the job, <laughs> they'll get rid of him. If, if he doesn't get rid of them, he, they'll get him the sack, just like they will everybody. They're not good enough. They're just not good enough. And they, you know, they keep saying, oh, they don't play the hard. They're not good enough, end of story. It, it's all about talent and they don't have it. Um, and it's heartbreaking. But I'm sure whoever the, whoever the guy is, uh, if he comes in with his eyes wide open, he'll do all right. But he'll have to get rid of all these people first uh, and build a new, a new team. He'll have to build a new team. You know, there's one or two, obviously, you're going to keep. Uh, I don't know about a suggestion, you know. <clears throat> um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I run out of ideas. Or, and when you don't have a say in the matter, I mean, we can sit here and talk about it all we want. But obviously, <clears throat> the manager didn't listen. Uh, I hope the new manager... You want them to be successful, you know, obviously. You want to see United win and be successful. Um, but they won't unless they get rid of most, of, I mean, probably 10 players need to go. I know it sounds a lot, but it's not. They need to go. Um, what was interesting, I noticed that, uh, that Sancho played in the right wing. First, hello, scored a goal, made a Hello, Ollie. Why? Why? I don't. I just don't. I mean, it's so obvious to everyone, and I don't understand why he didn't. But then again, he maybe just has the mentality of a coach and not a manager. It's well, nice as you do. as you see with with Sancho, he, he was playing left wing. Um, he wasn't playing in his correct position. There were even rumours they were going to try him at right back, which was a bit crazy. But all he leaves, he plays right wing and he scores two goals in two games. Exactly what you want to see from him, you know. And, and as you said numerous times on the show, if you need a right winger, sign a right winger and play him there. Don't sign a right winger and play him everywhere but the right wing because it'll be a disaster. That's a coach's mentality. You know what I think about coaches, Callum, uh, again over all old stuff here. Uh, that's a coach's mentality. You play them anywhere, you know, fit and get a system, play them in my system. Uh, really? When you buy a right winger, play them the right wing. That's why you bought them in the first place. Because you're brilliant on the right wing for the club that he was with. You buy them and don't play them there. Why? It, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So... Anyway, he uh, sadly, he's paid the price. But if he'd only listened to you and I, he'd still be in a job. One of the other aspects I want to get your opinion on is, is from Paul Scholes, another United legend. Um, Paul Scholes said that he felt it was embarrassing that Michael Carrick, uh, Mike Phelan, Kieran McKenna, who were all his coaching staff, have now stayed on at the club while Ollie left. He said that they should have had the decency to walk when Ollie left the club. Would you agree with that, or do you think they should look after themselves? One hundred percent, I agree with it. One hundred percent. He gave them the jobs, and if he goes, you do the right thing, and they don't. But that's his statement. I mean, Garrick. I mean, he was the most non-productive player, I think, that we've ever had, and we've had a few bad ones. There's nothing. There's nothing. He used to sit behind the centre-half and pass the ball to the goalie and back, goalie and back, goalie and back, goalie and back. He had 100 passes and they were all to his own man, normally the goalie. He could have passed the ball forward. And he's in charge of Man United. Crazy. Now, I, I, I agree 100% with Paul. You know, the, the man takes a bullet, you go with him, you go with him. If you're any honour at all, you go with him. 
So I didn't know he said that, by the way. I take my heart off to Scolzi. That then again, he could play. You know, you talk about people who could play. Roy King could play. People who could play, not people who are coaches play anywhere, do nothing, play anywhere. Um, so, no, I agree with him. Yeah. In terms of uh, Ralph Raniuk, he comes in until the summer. Then he'll stay on at the club in a in a consultancy role to try and help them sign some. Some players, that's um, that's what we are hearing. Uh, he is more known as a sporting director than a coach. In the last 10 years, he's, he's built Leipzig up from the German third division to challenge it at the top of that league. Do you think an interim manager can work? How would, how would you have reacted to having a manager that you know is only going to be there for six months? Does that take any authority away from them, from the players? Because they're looking at a man who they know is only there until May. Well, the fact that they've announced that he's going to stay on and be buying and selling will give him a little bit more authority than he normally would have. As an interim manager, why would you take it? Unless you just, within the club, just like they've the done with Carrick, appoint an interim manager to the end of the season. Yeah, okay. You can understand that, even though they didn't walk with the manager. But to bring... Why, why would you take the job? Why would you take the job? What you're saying is, but you're not good enough to manage the club on a permanent basis, but you can come in for a while. You, you wouldn't take the job. You'd be, you'd be embarrassed. I don't understand. But again, you don't your coaches. They're, they're not embarrassed. They, they just, I don't know. I've never heard of the guy, by the way. Never heard of him. And it seems to be in vogue now. All the Germans coming in, you know, playing with the Spanish and the Argentinians, really, now it's Germans. All the German, they're looking for German managers. It'll last for a little while then. There'll be somebody else. There'll be Iceland next. I think they'll get the managers from Iceland. I don't know, <laughs> wherever. It's always a cycle, isn't it? As you say, there was, for a while, it seemed like a lot of Scottish managers in the Premier League then. Um, you had an influx of some Spanish coaches. You're right. It seems to be... Uh, in cycles, and we've got quite a few German coaches just now. And again, still rubbish. So it just tells you everything. Get back to having homegrown managers and get people who could play themselves in charge. And they'll put a team together of people who can play and not people that have to tell how to play. But, but again, it's coaches, 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 mentality of coaches. Once the game gets back to having a manager, It'll be football will be a different game again. So, but this guy, I said, I've never heard of him anyway. It's just, he, I don't know what he does, but whatever. In terms but, of his record, he's, he's managed to build a few clubs in Germany. He won a German Cup with Schalke, he took them to the Champions League semi finals. But crucially, he's never managed outside of Germany. Um, so, obviously, in terms of him getting up the speed of English football, of course, he's watched it for many years, but it will be interesting to see how quickly he adapts. One thing that I find frustrating personally is he's not allowed to be in the dugout at tomorrow's game because he doesn't have a work permit, but he is allowed to watch it from the stands. I, I, I don't understand why they can't ratify that for him to manage. It's a government issue. It's not a, an issue from United, but to me that seems silly that he can be at the stadium today, he can be at the training ground tomorrow, but he's not allowed in the dugout on Thursday. It just seems crazy to me. I don't understand it myself, Callum. Uh, government, whatever they... I have no idea. I, I think it's crazy. You know, the guys come here, do a job. Wouldn't be a job. Uh, good or bad. At least he's not a technical director. He's going to become a sporting director. I don't know who that is either, by the way. But at least he's not a technical director. <laughs> I still, still don't understand that. Mind you, it's a little bit better than the throw-in uh, coach. So we'll see what he does. Um, I mean, it's a simple equation. You come in and you sell off the rubbish and start again. And you're going to have to do that. You have to sell off the rubbish. We'll see if he does it. And again, I come back to with Ollie. Did Ollie have the power to do that or not? I don't know. I don't know whether he did or didn't. 
So, uh, we'll see if this guy does. But unless he does, he's still in the same situation. You were an iconic Manchester United number seven. You wore that jersey with distinction. Cristiano Ronaldo is now in his second spell at the club wearing that jersey. He was benched against Chelsea and there was a big debate after the game. Should a player like him be benched? Should he not? What's your opinion? Surely, and well, I'm just going to give you mine quickly. I think if you're a goal scorer and, a, and you've scored a lot of goals, which he has this season, you have to play every game because you're the most likely to st- score goals. I was stunned that he was benched against Chelsea. Uh, so was I. I mean, why bring him back? He is a natural goal scorer. That's what he does. That's what he's made his name, scoring goals. Um, why bring him and not play him? It's crazy. I play him in every game until he, until he can't run because he is a natural goal scorer. What you have to do is get people to provide chances for him. And now that Sancho's back in the right wing, yeah, he'll get chances. Um, no, you've got to play him. You've got to play Cavani as well. You know, he's a finisher, he's four goals. And that's what we need. The problem is that we give away so many easy goals because the defence is absolute garbage. I thought you could take a double deck of bots to our defence. It's absolutely horrendous. Uh, so we'll we'll see what happens. We'll see what this guy does uh, between now and the end of the season. But at least he knows he's got a job. Sporting director. I don't, well, maybe you could explain that to me, Callum. What's a sporting director? So essentially his role, um, what he's, he's managed to do before is he will take charge of the club's transfer uh, and transfers and recruitment. Um, and he'll also be involved in trying to improve aspects of the training ground um, as well. That That is what he's, he's renowned for in his career more than coaching and management over the last 10 years. He's built Hoffenheim from the third division in Germany to win in the league. And then he managed to do something similar with Leipzig, albeit they won the cup instead of the league. So you break with teams that are rubbish. <laughs> well, he'll fit in here then. Yeah, he'd be perfect. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I don't understand that. He's going to be buying and selling. Though, what is the manager going to? Do? Well, manager. I keep saying the manager. The new coach. He's not going to buy and sell. Why would you go to a club where you you're not going to get the players you want and get rid of the players you don't want? Why? Why would you rely on somebody else? Let him, let him stay as the manager or coach. Well, I keep saying manager. Let him stay as he is then. Don't bring anybody else in because obviously he's going to do the whole job, which is ridiculous. You know, it's crazy. It's like saying to Mark Busby, well, Mark, you can't buy any players. Louis Edwards will buy the players as chairman. And uh, you just play. <laughs> yeah, right. Of course. It's ludicrous. It's absolutely crazy. It's crazy. But the game's crazy. Technical director. <laughs> so I'm still on that one from the last pod. A technical, what does a technical director do? It's ludicrous. We used to get technical drawn at school. And that was <laughs> one of the thing. It's not what you do with football. And I hear the commentator. Technically, that was a good throw in. Really? Or technically, that was a good corner kick. <laughs> What are you talking about? It's garbage. It's absolute garbage. The game's gone crazy. It's all about stats and things and coaches' paradise. You were a player who wasn't on the bench very often, or if at all. How how do you react if you get dropped for a big game? I mean, thinking of Ronaldo, how do you react when you're told you're you're on the bench? I don't know. I can't answer. <laughs> that simple. I don't know. I never did. How do you think you would have reacted? Uh, how do you think we reacted? Um, I, I don't, <laughs> don't know. I wish I could answer you. How would I react? Well, first of all, I'd be devastated, obviously. Now, when I'm sat chatting to you, it's going to take one second, because the cat, we, we've got a, my granddaughter's cat with us at the moment, and he's meowing to get out. One second. 
Well, there you go. It's that's the, the joys of live broadcasting here. Um, I never thought we'd see the day that that, that Willie Morgan was was looking after a cat. But there we go. <laughs> tiger, he's called Tiger. He's sat there. You know, when you try to get him out, he won't go out. And then when you don't want him to go, he wants to go out. So anyway, he's gone. <laughs> Went to the garden for a while. So um, yeah, um, I. You'd be devastated to get dropped. In fact, if you did, you'd probably find a place to hide. You wouldn't show your face because you'd be so embarrassed. You just didn't. You know, you wouldn't. No, they don't care. They get dropped and on the telly. <laughs> on the people playing every time. Like, really? You should be in hiding. They don't care. You know, it's. It's a different mentality than the one we have as we can. Different mentality. It's, uh, well, <clears throat> Go we've on. got several questions um, this week, which I have to say, <laughs> I'm looking forward to your reaction in some of these. Um, Ashy, who's a fan of the show, I, I don't know if he knows what your reaction is going to be to this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Willie, do you think Fred brings anything to this team? Yeah, he does. He, he, you know, the one thing about Fred, he could probably, probably be a little bit better than Stevie Wonder in his position. Probably, but maybe not. He's devoid of talent. He's, he's got more talent than a, an apple. He can't play. Why Ollie? Play them at all. Again, we, we spoke about this in the past. Why would you play him? Why would you play Matic? You know, I can understand you play Pogba because you cost him what? Even though he does nothing. But why would you even have them in, in your squad? He, he, he made, a, you know, fundamental mistakes, Ollie, sadly, just having them around. So, no, Fred. <laughs> No, no thanks. No thanks. Another question um, in here from Chris. He wants to know, what was your opinion on Kenny Dalglish as a footballer, even though he played for the other side in Liverpool? Kenny was a great player. Great centre-forward, you know, goal scorer. Uh, and apart from goal scorer, as a centre-forward, whoever played off him, scored with Ian Rush, benefited playing with, uh, with Kenny. Because you could hit the ball into Kenny in the bottom, and you kill it and, and make a chance. Other than score goals, he made chances for other people. Uh, he was a great club player for Celtic, obviously, and Liverpool. Great club player. Another question. <laughs> I think people are here are trying to test you this week, Willie. A question yeah. from Charlie. If you had to pick one, who would you rather play for, Liverpool or Rangers? Charlie, may God forgive you. Um, I've had to pick one. You know, I've, I've been asked this question before, Charlie, I must tell you, because back home in, in Socky, uh, where it was very divided religion-wise, our best pals were, uh, were Huns. They were on the opposite side. <laughs> and uh, they said, you know, if Rangers asked you to sign, would you sign? And he, if they paid the right money and they had a good team, of course I'd say. I'm playing football. I'm not here to judge and do anything. I'm here to play football. And I would have done. Um, you know, I could have signed for Liverpool when I went to Man United. Bill Shankly, they came, Liverpool came and uh, asked, uh, you know, that I consider going there. Um, so, I nearly did. Yeah, I would have no problem playing for Liverpool or Rangers. I, I, I know I'm not answering your questions. I would have played for either. That's an honest. Uh, it's an honest answer. I'd have played for either, even though. I mean, I'd love to play. I know I could have done. I wish I had gone to Celtic for my dad's sake, just for a while, even. Um, 
you can't change, you can't change the past. So Charlie, yeah, probably probably Liverpool at the time because Liverpool had a great team. They, you know, they're a great team, Liverpool, and uh, they were winning things. And it had been, yeah, I could have gone there. Uh, should have gone to Leeds, it happened. <laughs> but they were the best team at the time. But anyway, I chose United, and I wouldn't change it. So. Other good friend of the show, Johnny the Red at the Gaffer 1969 on Twitter. Do you think United have any chance of winning either the FA Cup or the Champions League this season? No. Sorry, John. I, I wish, obviously. Do you know how hard it is hiding in the house when, when we're going through a bad spell because I'm surrounded by. Man City and Liverpool supporters, so it's, uh, oh, I'd love to, I'd love to win one of them. It depends what this guy does. You know, if he, if he persists with what we've got, we're not going to win anything. But if he makes changes, as soon as he comes in, I mean, he must have looked at the situation, you would think, or I would think, because if I was going to, I say, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't come as an interim manager. It means you're not good enough to be the manager, but you can come for a while. Mm, don't think so. But if he's any brains, uh, he'll make changes very quickly. And you never know if he does. Who knows? Ain't, we're still in there. We're still in both things. We've still got a chance. Uh, you know, there's not a lot to beat. There's not a lot to beat at all. Uh, I mean, Chelsea top the league. They're not great by any standards. Um, so it's yeah let's see what he does let's see what he does John gets in touch another friend of the show to say Scotland um, in the World Cup playoffs could play Wales in the playoff final should they beat Ukraine and should Wales beat Austria do you think Scotland can beat Ukraine and Wales to get to the World Cup of course yeah of course I think Scotland's not a bad team I think what he, he's done a great job with what, he, what he's had. He's got a great, got a lot of young lads in. They all want to play for the shirt, you know. Uh, they're not there just marking time. And I've watched them, you know, a couple of times in the matches. No, Scotland, they've got a great chance. Win the World Cup, <laughs> you never know, who knows. Wouldn't that be wonderful? But I, I think we've got every chance of beating Wales in the, in the Ukraine. I mean, Wales, come on. The pub up the road have got a team that could beat Wales. So <laughs> I'm not so sure about them. No, nah, we'll, I think we'll, we'll get there, John. Last two questions. Um, this one here is from George. If you could have played for any manager in world football who you didn't play under, who would it be and why? Uh... Any manager I could play for. Zal Gallo, the Brazilian manager. I would love to play for Brazil. <laughs> they me. Wouldn't anybody love to play? I we after we played against Brazil in 1972 in the Maracanã, down in Brazil at the Maracanã, Zal Gallo said that I was the best number seven he'd ever seen. So with that, I would like to play for him as well. Um, obviously, he's a great manager. Um, uh, domestically, ah, I think it would be great to play for Bill Shankly and Don Revy, other than the ones I played for. The ones I played for were, for me, the best. Harry Potts and Matt Busby. Um, and Ian Greaves at Bolton, fantastic manager. Um, I played for, I wouldn't change those. But, if, you know, if I could have gone somewhere else, yeah, I had done Revy Bill Shankly. The last question I am going to leave to Alan this week. It's a, again a similar kind of theme. If you had to pick a five aside team of players that you played with, who would make it into the team? Uh, 
I mean, including myself, or is that without me? What, well, what well, do you know, we'll, we'll make it a six-a-side team. So you're in. Choose five yeah. teammates. Choose five teammates. Bestie, Dennis Law, Brian O'Neill. I've got one to go, haven't I? Two five to go. Uh, and I would have Alex Stepney because he'd be in goals. Right, OK. So those four in yourself to make it up? Uh, that's only four. Yes, yeah, so you can have one more. Uh, in my team, five aside. Don't forget, it's a different game, five aside. So I can't have Paddy. Five aside was not his uh, 40. Can't have Nobby, really. It was a little bit too... He would just kick him. Kick everybody. Um, <laughs> Bobby, Bobby needed a bit of space, so you need people with you know tight control. Brian Kidd, I'd have Brian Kidd in my team. Uh, kiddo, great feet, you know. Uh, so I think we would have done all right. It wouldn't have been a bad team. Just on Brian Kidd, just you mentioned him there. He said that was a, a, a impressive career as a player, obviously. Assistant manager to Sir Alex Ferguson, also worked with Pep Guardiola. What's he like as a person? Because he seems like a very calm person. Again, I could be getting him totally wrong here, but that's the way he comes across to me. You're not totally wrong. He's a very, very, very nice guy. You know, great guy. Um, he's just nice. What you see is exactly what he is. He's just a nice. That's why he he's in the job because as a player. You would love him to be your assistant manager or whatever, because he's easy to get along with. And the fact he was a great player, you know, and and also he was a bloody great golfer. <laughs> great golfer, Brian. Uh, played up in North Manchester where he played his golf. Yeah, very very good golfer. But no, just a nice guy. As I said at the start of the show, um, I cannot believe it's December already. Um, 24 days to go in, in, until it's Christmas. Is this a time of the year that you enjoy? Have you got any plans set in stone yet for the big day? Any plans? Uh, you have to ask Kay. She does <laughs> all. Um, I have no say. <laughs> uh, we'll be having, you know, subject to all these COVID new regulations, whatever come in. It'll just be family. Um, uh, that's all we, we normally do. And our great friends, John and Vincent. And uh, that's it. Um, for me, you know, Christmas Christmas was never really a celebration time. It was buying presents for the kids. We, we didn't sell because we were playing, you know, so from like 15 right through to 40. Played nearly every Christmas. So it wasn't a time for celebration. You can have a drink, you can, you know, you have to be careful what you eat. So it was never, it was just for the kids. Now it's not. Now she seems to buy a lot of drinking and uh, we get a lot of drunkards here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now it's, it's nice, it's nice to have a family. But they're always here anyway. <laughs> so, um, but it, it's, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And the fact that I'm not playing anymore. I mean, I always try to get out and have a few holes. If the weather's half decent. Even on Christmas Day? Well, yeah. If, it, yeah. Well, if I get if I get a pass, Kevin, <laughs> you, you, you get there. You get there. If I get a pass and there's a little bit of time, <laughs> only for a few holes, not whole games. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, no, I, other than that, it's, it's really just being at home, watching the telly, listening to Johnny Mathis, his Christmas songs, we're always playing them. So um, I spoke to him last week for all you listeners and viewers, and he's in great form, he's in good health, and he's, he's on the road singing all the time now, back singing, you know, they've lifted the restrictions there. But are we so, um, you know, he knows I do the pod, so he said to pass on his regards to everyone who is listening and watching. Brilliant. Well, that's a perfect way, I think, to end the show. 
the 1st of December. It's getting closer to Christmas, as we've said, but we will be back before Christmas with another show um, in the lead-up to that period. Lots of games to discuss, of course, over then as well. But until next time, from Willie and myself, thank you very much for watching. <laughs>